Good morning. Denise Dryden here from Whitefish and I wish you could see this window behind me. It's um, sub-zero. It's not sub-zero yet. It's the temperature is on its way down. It's snowing and blowing and uh, you can't see it. I thought you could so I tried. Uh, today is January 1st 2017 and I'm so excited that I get to do this on today because um, I just wanted to say briefly that there's this numerology um, it's an ancient wisdom and it works really well in helping understand sort of our relationship with things in a scale of one through nine and um, some of you may have heard that we just finished a nine year so we put together a, a sequence of one two three four five you know up to the ninth year which was 2016 and that 2017 today is one 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 so January is a one zero one zero plus one is one uh, the first is zero plus one is one and 2017 is two plus one plus seven equals ten and one plus zero equals one so we're at a complete start from scratch date um, first time in nine years and you know play with numerology if you've ever really been curious about it but uh, to be able to do this live broadcast today on 111 and talk about change um, is pretty exciting and you may notice I've been sick for two days down down <laughs> and I really wanted to make sure that I could talk today so um, be patient with me and let's go through the process of change so a different perspective on change change you know, instead of resolutions and instead of sort of thinking about what is it I, I need to change about myself? What is it I need? What goals do I need to set that I want to go towards and join the gym and, you know, ad nauseum? I, all you have to do is go to Target or TJ Maxx or Macy's or any store and the entire front end of the store is about fitness <laughs> clothes, fitness programs, fitness equipment, everything because you know we usually decide we're going to make some big changes and I'm going to invite you today instead of making big changes let's do something different let's explore our relationship with change so I'm going to be a little note reliant today because I'm tired <laughs> so what I want to know is what's tapping you on the shoulder what's tapping you on the shoulder to explore to play with to reframe or to even transform the energy of and how do we learn to pay attention to that because when we step into change we're really saying tap 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 something doesn't feel good it doesn't feel right to me it doesn't feel normal and when we're in that position where it doesn't feel good or right or normal then we try to put our energy into changing ourselves or changing others or changing things and environments around us so that they come back to good and right and normal for us and so when we are hesitant to embrace change when we are hesitant to make any kind of deep you know changes in our future it's because we know what good and right and normal feels like and sometimes it's almost like we freeze frame we go God I don't think it could ever get any better than this or I feel so good right now, or I've been feeling things going downhill. <laughs> and so if I just freeze it right here where it's at least tolerable, then I don't have to make any other deep changes. And so what I'm saying is our relationship with how we feel good or right or normal and how we address that to our view of ourselves and the people in our lives and the world and the environment and the things around us comes down to us it comes down to us and how we feel about good right and normal so we try to change our bodies we push and I'm gonna use this these words push manipulate and control and they're kind of harsh but they're also true we push at something whether whether our hearts in the right place or not it doesn't matter we push manipulate to manipulate is to take something and try to move it from one place to another our intentions may be good but we're still literally moving something from one form into another and trying as hard as we can to do that. Um, we also control, which means that if I can just hold this exactly the way it is or keep that person from doing this or try to, to put so many boundaries around something that it can't move, 
then I know where it is and I know that it's safe. And we do that a lot as parents. We do that a lot in relationships. We even do it in our work environments. So when we push, manipulate, and control parts of ourselves or others, we're doing that so that we feel good, right, and normal. Do you get that? So we have all these sort of outer things that we do when we're not feeling good, right, or normal. So when we get used to comfortable and even dependent on things that are consistent, desirable, structured, or whatever we feel is best for us, then we sort of hold on to it real tight. And the analogy I'm going to use is like a beach ball. And, and may, some of you may have heard this before. And if you haven't, um, if you take a beach ball and you stand in waist high water and you push that beach ball down, to get that air underneath the water takes some pressure. And it takes a constant monitoring. And oh my God, you know, my shoulder's starting to get sore here, so I gotta move this over. And this, I gotta shift. And oh, the water's moving. And, and everything is about maintaining that control. So I think that when we come up with change and, we, and we're afraid of it, or we don't know what it's gonna bring us and we're ambivalent, or we're even like <gasps> a little worried as to where it's gonna take us, we hold on tight and we try to keep things in the same form. And then as the tides of change start moving through us, you know, whether it's weather, whether it's um, personality changes, whether it's natural growth um, in business, in relationship. And I'm keeping things pretty big right now for a reason. We hold on and that holding on is exhausting. That holding on and trying to change somebody, something is exhausting. So introverts and sensitives have a tendency to not want things to change. And so they try to spend a lot of time making sure that they hold things in place. And, you know, it's a really tough world for someone who's afraid of change. So what I want to do is say that, you know, change is part of our world. Everything around us changes. Our skin changes, our hair changes, our, the way we breathe each day changes. If you look outside, the seasons change with every day. And I want you to, to remember the Fibonacci, which is, you know, the spiral, that everything starts at the core and it just, it just buds and it blooms and it opens and it continues to open. And that cellular structure, that cellular movement is what we call energy. And when that energy is constantly moving us forward, and then we as a body are resistant to moving forward and we hold on and we try to, what is it? Um, push, manipulate, or control, we're fighting against the odds of nature. We're fighting against our own true process. So the reason I'm asking you to explore your relationship with change is I want you to look at how do I make changes? I want you to look what, how do I react when other people change around me? How do I react when my job description changes? How do I react when my spouse wants to do something completely new and different and it's like, Really? Where did that come from? Or you watch our children blossom and become really interested in things that are not even part of who we are. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> oh my God. So sorry. Um, okay. <coughs> <coughs> okay. So this is really important that we take our own understanding of our own relationships and I'm going to need desperately to get some water. So hold on. I know it's totally crazy to try to do a <coughs> live broadcast. <clears throat> and I'll do the best I can. <coughs> Who knows where this cough came from. <coughs> okay. It's kind of interesting that this cough is bringing up some of the same stuff that I'm talking about. So, <coughs> once we know what our relationship is with change, then we can do some exploring. Because if we have a focus on some of the hard linear skills, and we find ourselves in a place of always monitoring, oh, is it taking us where we wanna go or not go? And is that where I wanna go or not go? And we fear change or we are um, reluctant, then what we do is we pay super close attention and we're monitoring everything 
And then what we're doing is we're pushing, manipulating, and um, I can't even talk. <clears throat> Sorry. Pushing, manipulating, and controlling. And that's exhausting. So what I want to do is give you a skill that's different. Because when we focus on our own relationship with change, we become curious with another person, with ourselves with how we align with what I'm feeling inside with what my world is telling me on the outside. How we co-create, we collaborate, and we expand alongside of the environment that we're in. So this is really crucial as a parent, especially, or when we're in a significant relationship, is that once we know what our relationship is with change, how we see it, how it affects us, when we grip in, when we try to freeze it, when we are able to back off and step into this co-creation in this beautiful place, then what we do is we, I have this example and we use a triangle. So at the top of the triangle, I just put self-soothing, which is a tool for how we calm ourselves down. And then we have this issue that comes up and we can also, you know, we can say whether it's a child who wants to dye their hair, change schools, starts becoming really um, alternative in how they dress and who they hang out with and they change their friends. And it's an issue. And we worry about that. And then what we do is we have this self-awareness. So we have self-soothing, we have the issue, and we have self-awareness. So what I want you to do is put your, you know, draw it on a triangle and put your finger on the issue, which is to say it out loud, to say it as clearly as you can. I'm noticing that my child is differentiating from me and going in a different direction. Number two is my self-awareness is that when I see something change, I go into fear. Fear promotes me into manipulation and control or I am becoming curious and I want to know what that is that they're doing and why. So then when we go to self-awareness, we move to the next one, which is once I know that I'm rattled and that change is starting to create some sort of like nervousness in me, then we go to self-soothing tools, which is like what I just did where I just have to stop trying to talk to you for a minute and just take a second and close my eyes and breathe and go back to what I know to be my absolute center that works for me, and then I can start over. So self-soothing can take 10 seconds, it can take 10 minutes, sometimes it can take up to an hour, because what we have to do is we have to look at what is it that brings us into reaction to change, what's our issue with it, and then what tools can we use when we're faced with something that takes us out of our comfort zone, right? And then we step away from trying to push, manipulate, or control, and we step into alignment and collaboration. So for this 2017, because we have so many changes ahead of us, and some of them are going to be really different than anything we could have ever imagined, use these tools. Use your own self-awareness. What is my relationship with change? What works for me? What doesn't? How do I recognize when I'm triggered and how to release into alignment, collaboration, curiosity, and become something different. So this is what I do as a coach. So by all means, if you're curious about um, learning more, there's more videos on my website. Go to denisedrydencoaching.com. Give me a call, drop me a text or an email, and uh, let's chat. Meanwhile, have a fabulous January 1st, 2017. Have a fabulous January. Have a fabulous year. And I look forward to more. Thank you for putting up with this runny nose and hoarse voice and all of that. And uh, I hope you are well. So enjoy. Bye-bye.